Yes, thank you. Hey, everybody. <laughs> I feel like I've just won an Oscar. Is that what it feels like? I need one of, like, one of those little statues in my hand, and I'm just going to say a little speech. And thank you so much. I wouldn't even know what to do, right? Who do you think? Anyway, thanks for being here today uh, for another fun edition of Deborah Cobalt Live. And we're going to be talking our first show today about the Oscars, but in particular, Oscar fashion. So joining me in studio, we've got Camille Jumel. Thank you for being here. Hello, thank you. Camille is a decorated costume designer. She's worked with and dressed Scarlett Johansson, Bruce Willis, Mira Servino, Jason Patrick, Amy Adams. There's a whole ton of them. Um, and alongside of her is a glamazon. She walked into the studio and I thought, I cannot do my show with this girl. It's not possible. Truly beautiful, statuesque um, model, Brianna Ashley. And you are wearing vintage jean Shelley from the 1960s. And this is what a movie star looks like. You're just Thank gorgeous. You. So Camille was nice enough to bring in um, Ashley. Uh, sorry, Brianna. Um, Either one works. Yeah, just to see a gorgeous gown and what something like that would look like and what it looks like for the Oscars. So um, I'm going to start with you. Mm -hmm. um, you've worked with so, so many top, top actors in the field. What are some of the movies that you've worked on? Um, I love my film Psycho Beach Party with Amy Adams. I love that. I was able to design and make all those vintage 1960s uh, costumes and make them fit, you know, to the actor or actress. And that was one of the things that I noticed at the Oscars was you can have a beautiful gown or tuxedo, but if it doesn't fit properly, it, you're doing yourself a disservice. Let's start with some of the ones that did fit right, and then we're going to get down and dirty into some of the ones that did not. <laughs> um, who do you think looked terrific at the Oscars? Well, you know, Nicole Kidman really puts time and effort into we have how pictures. she looks. She's wearing the blue dress with the big bow in the front. It's, it's, but she's it's, so it's, tiny, it's, she didn't look real. This time she simply didn't look real in well, that dress. Well, it's actually a, a peplum, you know, um, that she was wearing with that gown, um, you know, where it just, it's designed to come at the waistline and go down. Um, but she puts effort into what she looks like. She celebrates the Oscars. She doesn't take it as, oh, I'm going to another award show. She plans what she's wearing. She does her homework. And she looks effortless and well put together every single time. What I love about her is, I mean, she's a little older. I don't even know how old she is. But her skin is as perfect in porcelain as yours is. And I think Thank you told me you. you're 24 years old. Yes. How do these people keep their bodies this wide? Not even like this wide, but <laughs> this big with porcelain skin. I mean, she looked close to perfection. Like you could buy her off a shelf, you know? <laughs> right. But, you know, again, it's... You know, what they do, what they eat, how they exercise, they, they put the effort in. I would like to see more effort into the Oscars in a whole. I think we have a tremendous talent pool of actors, and I would have liked to see um, the historic actors, maybe more singing and dancing. So you like the old school I, glamour. I, I, you know, as a kid, you know, you go to the Oscars to be entertained, that's the thing that's missing Not today. preached to, you mean? <laughs> exactly. You know, I mean, I know everyone's got a cause today, and I'm all for them. And I believe in a great cause. But this is the Oscars. This is when we're all connected together, sitting in a theater in the dark, waiting to see and hear what's going to happen next. That's how we are all connected, human to human, artist to artist. And I just felt that there's a massive disconnect with the Academy. Um, I think there's a massive disconnect with some actors today. I think it's not about the paycheck, how much money you make, what glamorous um, places you're going to. It's about, it's about the love of the craft, and it's about presenting the Academy Awards and the Oscars with grace and class and wanting to be there 
and not looking at you watching, waiting for it to be over. You know, it's interesting, though, if you look at some of the films this year, you know, so many films, and especially with the whole Me Too movement coming up only just a few months ago, really, mm -hmm. I think women are trying to maybe give a different message. This, let's talk about the women, actually, mm -hmm. because the men were all in velvet. I got We got to figure that one out. <laughs> um, I didn't get the whole tuxedo thing, but we'll save that for a minute. But, you know, women seem to be on a mission. And, okay, let's talk about Frances McDormand. Do we have her picture? Um she was, I, I know that she probably put effort into what she was wearing. And I believe that she uh, looked really lovely. I just want to say that. Um, I think she, in lieu of uh, high she's glamour. She's a great actress. She's a great actress. But but in, in lieu of high glamour, she mm -hmm. seems to be trying to go a little more... Um, Oh, woman every day, you know, that you would see out at a lovely no, dinner I, party? I, Am I, I right about I that? I think that that's what made her comfortable. And again, I think you have to dress like that, but you've got to bump it up a notch because this is the Oscars. And this is what millions of people tune into. And I think for years the Oscars has been losing viewers and losing per percentages and whatever ratings are out there, but... I you think. know, but for, in a way, like, let's look at the Miss America pageant. They're losing viewers, too. Maybe people are just tired of all these shows. I hate to say I it. I think they want to be entertained. Yeah. And I think that's what's missing in the Oscars. I mean, they just want to be entertained. So give me a couple of others. Now, she looks beautiful. Jennifer Garner, we just yeah, had Jennifer up there. Yeah, Jennifer Garner, I loved her dress. I really did. And she's had three kids. Look at her. Yeah, she, looks she looks pretty great. phenomenal. You know, I, I will say that... A lot of my clients opt not to do a train because it's so hard to manipulate oh, and it, get around crowds. I've fallen in but a train. But I think That's she hard. looks amazing, and I think it looks breathtaking. I think Kelly Ripa, you know, really dressed. She like, looked amazing, amazing, right? Beautiful. Loved what yes. she wore. Very elegant. Very and her elegant. husband looked terrific. And, and who I, do we have there next? Is that Mira well, Sorvino over Mira there? I love Mira Sorvino. She's an amazing person. Because I know you've worked with her. She looked very different to me. I think her makeup was a little more subdued. Yeah, she, Am I right? She looks great all the time. I mean, I've seen her in jeans and a t-shirt, and she's just exquisite, and she's got a pure heart. And um, Well, I just have to say, in the book that I'm writing, I've chosen her to play me. So... We'll be talking soon. Okay. I'm actually serious about that because she's Italian like I am, and I'm talking a little bit about my and I'm upbringing. I'm Italian. Yeah, and you got to dress her. So I'm, I'm serious about this. I Someone said, who would play you? And I said, Mira Servino. So yeah. just keep that in the back of your mind. Keep I going. Will. Oh, she looked unbelievable. Oh, yeah. Good God, I could barely stand it. I wasn't crazy about the cups, right? Yeah. I mean, you have Oops. you have to also remember with the Oscars that kids watch the Oscars. Right. So they have to, you know, Make sure nothing drapes down too low or falls off. But the it, cups seem like the wrong color. They almost seem like she put white cups under a black dress. Do you know what I well, mean? Well, she probably used nude cups um, and was hoping that it was going to cancel out. But with the sheer fabric, it yeah. doesn't. But, you know, she's amazing. Uh, she, I loved, rocked she rocked that dress. She rocked Good Lord, did she run. And she owned it. Her attitude owned that dress. Yep. And I thought Ashley Judd looked amazing. She was photographed with Mira Servino. I'm a big uh, Ashley Judd fan. She always, that to me was glamorous. Mm -hmm. You know. And you know what? A little bit on the, sim a little more of a simplicity to it as well. So if you want to have a simplicity about you but be glamorous, I agree. I think that but was a also, beautiful dress. It was, And it fit her. Yes. You know, that's the thing. You know, um, sometimes you're in a dress and it, it really takes uh, a city to dress you sometimes. But it fit her proportionately and it was well fitted. And that's why it looks amazing. Do you know whose dress concerned me? Matthew McConaughey, his wife. She had a larger a white dress on. I mm -hmm. think she's one of the most stunning women that I've ever seen. Now, she's not an, an actress or a movie star. Um, but I thought that was not the best fit for her. Do you know what I'm, do you remember the dress I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, I didn't see that too much. I was more concerned with, you the know, actors. the actors, the look and feel of it. I thought Laura Dern, uh, she's a dear friend of one of my really good friends and 
She looked really amazing too, and the dress fit her. Brave and to wear white, but her body, she can wear it. It's like the way great. you could wear a, a, a white dress. I mean, you mm-hmm. have to have a certain type of physique to wear something like that. Um, but this, what you've got on, uh, Brianna, is is pure elegance, right? Thank this you. This is an example of, and it's vintage. And you know, if something fits well, and it could be vintage and you could still rock it and it's make like it your uh, own. Rita Moreno right what, how do you say is that her name did I say it right? Rita Moreno yeah she wore that dress when she won her Oscar correct right yes I would have liked to see a little bit more of a reinterpretation of that maybe um, the skirt could have been tapered in a little bit or less of a bubble on the hip it seemed like there was more of a bubble on the hip from when she wore it the first time. Mm, Do you correct. agree? Yeah. I, I was so it's like they they did interpret it, but they interpreted it with more. Yeah. So mm-hmm. you weren't crazy about it. Right. And I know uh Blanco Blanco, the girl in that red and white dress, she dates um John Savage and I worked with John on a few projects and she's got an amazing body. Um again, I would have liked to see something on her just a little bit more classic there's something about not giving everything all away and being a classic beauty and I think this would have been good for another show but not the Oscars that's just my own personal opinion it seemed like there was a lot of expressionism going on whatever people wanted to wear they they wore oh what about Jennifer Garner not Jennifer Garner um oh help me out Uh, we were talking about her in the green room oh lord um, um, it might be Jennifer, Jennifer Lawrence. Lawrence. That's it. Yeah, Jennifer, Jennifer Lawrence, Lawrence has, a, has a great body. Um, I just think that uh, maybe the hair and makeup could have been a little bit more glamorous. I don't. Think I thought it was so too. You know, I had enough. I was watching with a bunch of people, and a lot of people were like, "Oh my God, she's like hot!" And I said, "No doubt. You know, come on." Yeah. But is that the look you're going for right now? The hair was just sort of like you just came out of the ocean. It was just sort of well, wild and crazy. Well, it's more of like a beach head with, you know, nice waves. But, you know, again, I think when you look at the history of the Oscars, it's 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 amazing. It's like the, the top of the top. You know, you're the top of the list. And I just think with these this year's Oscars, I didn't see that across the board. I didn't see it in the entertainment end of it. I just didn't see it. So what do you think is going to happen, like, moving forward with these award shows? There's so many movements out think, now. It's almost I, like a, a movement show. I think we have to get back to entertaining the public across the board in Kentucky, in Idaho, in, you know, Montana, in every state, in every aspect of the world, and not – I think everyone has a voice politically now. So I think no one really knows where to put that voice. So whenever they get in front of a microphone or in front of anyone, they're voicing an opinion. And I think that's great. But I think at the end of the day, people still want to be entertained. So what can people do? I mean, they, I mean, you know, how do you get out there and remind somebody, this is the Oscars, elegant, People are watching you who will never see a movie star. Well, they'll never step in front of one. You know, we live here in L.A. where we, we are used to seeing them at your local Starbucks. And you know that's true. <laughs> right. They're just everywhere. Right. I had a woman on last week, and she was telling me how she, I don't know, stepped on someone's shoes when she was walking down. And she looked up, and it was Ringo Starr. And, of course, I said, <laughs> where were you? She said, Beverly Hills. I said, but of course. I mean, you know, only out here. That's not going to happen probably in the middle of Kansas somewhere no, because and it I, just and doesn't. I, and so I, you're right. They want to see that glamour. And I think, you know, um, people have to put effort into the Oscars. That's it. They have to put effort in and they have to care and they have to represent the Oscars for what the Oscars are. Um, when you go about doing your work and you're dressing mm-hmm. someone for a part, how do you even do that? Do you study what that person is all about? Everything, and- too, is about the skin color, their complexion, their hair, you know, where they're, what they're going to be sitting on, up against. That's the background. How, the background. But when you're doing something like the Oscars, 
It's all about drama. It's all about class. It's elegance. all about elegance. And I think you cannot be... Some people are born with it. Some people are astute to it. Some people have had wonderful parents that rear them that way. And the rest of us have to have someone like myself, a costume designer, or someone in the industry that is going to take pride. And listen, you could be totally slim in a size zero or a one or a two, all the way up to a 22, okay? Um, but you have to care about your presentation. And, and it does have to fit. You're right. There are some best dresses fit. that just don't fit. Okay. I'm going to the Oscars and I'm presenting, or I'm up for one. What would you put me in? Ooh. Well, I see you in um, an amazing bodice, you oh. know, a long gown. Um, but I also think a very big fabric that isn't utilized on a lot of women is velvet. You'd see me in velvet? Ooh, because velvet, velvet oh, yes. a lot, when you do study cinematic design, as I have, velvet um, is an amazing fabric, but it's also very slimming if it's cut right. I'm visualizing myself in this. The light dies in, vel <laughs> in velvet. And I had this um, interesting scenario a few years ago with a young actress that wanted to wear satin duchess. And... She was a bigger girl, and, you know, I'm a bigger girl as well, so I would opt not to wear a satin color or a satin fabric because when the light hits the satin, it bounces off of it, and it's going to make you look bigger than oh, what I think you satin are. is very difficult to it's wear. It's very difficult. I think beaded, like what she's wearing, beaded is, is, great. is great, especially if it's got a little bit of stretch but underneath if, if and you, it could if, suck you in. If it's cut right and you put someone in a, in a wonderful velvet, it's very slimming. Mm, very nice. So are you giving any advice that people come to you to say, what do you think? What should we yeah, do next I, year? I also think in the past few years, the town has been overrun with stylists. And stylists are good when you're doing a shoot or something, you know, that is for a specific thing. But I think a costume designer, a good one, will do their homework, will study someone's physique or body and know what is going to look good on them and, and as dress you said, them accordingly. What, what's going on behind them and in and front of them and around them. And what's going on behind them and what's going on with the person next to them as well. Because, right. you know, in the movies you have to be prepared for that. So you were overall a little bit disappointed. What are you working on next? What's your next project that you're working on? I'm working on a on? few films. Um, I'm doing a film called Bond with J.R. Niles, and I'm doing um, a movie with a producer that I've worked with before, Amy Williams. Yeah. And um, I believe we just attached uh, Graham Greene, who's oh, a terrific. really amazing actor. So when so, you when you're the costume designer on something like that, you do the overall. You do it all. You do I, everything. I read the script. I break down the script. I figure out how many days, how many nights. If there's a montage scene where you go back in time or to dream sequence, and then um, I look at the palette of what the director wants, what the DP, the director of photography wants, and then we kind of all have a meeting and discuss the look of the film and how we're going to pull it together. You must have a large team, though, uh, to, yeah, that you I work have, with. Yeah, I have great assistants, but I'm also very easy to work with. And I'm involved in this uh, charity that the Costume Designers Guild, I'm a member almost 20 years now. The Lollipop now. Foundation? It's the Lollipop Tell Foundation. Tell us about that. It's uh, lollipoptheater.org, and it's about some of the children in the LA hospitals that are battling a disease and we're gonna design a costume for them for their hero um, that is beautiful so we're gonna be doing that and uh, it's gonna be on my Facebook page Camille Jamel and you could read up on it but it's it's for a good cause and that's what we have to remember that we're in this industry to help people um, 
you're designing what superhero costumes for for them? Yeah, if they it? tell me choosing, they want to be a superhero, Wonder Woman, a princess, then I'm going to be. I was just told yesterday I'll be designing something for a 17 year old uh, terminally ill child. So the kind of hits home. So I was like, sign me up. And I you really want to make involved. her feel so, so special. So special. Yes. That that breaks my heart. That's unbelievable. So I'll be doing that. And I'm working on my line couture junkie. And I've got my personal client, uh, Taz Saunders, who's been very good to me for several years. He knew that I had to come here today. And I I came here. So I'd like to tell him thank you. Give him a shout out. <laughs> yes. Hang on. There's one thing we forgot. The men. Talk about oh, velvet. Yes. Yes. Everyone was in velvet. Now, this was not one of my favorites. Maybe you liked it. What's his name? Army Archer? Is it? Army Archer. I, I met Army Archer. Handsome up guy. Sundance. He's Very a- handsome. You know, again, um, sometimes you have stylists and dressers push you into a direction and tell you that this is the way to go. Um, I think he actually looked really handsome. He's a handsome tall man he could basically wear anything and look great but one thing a good costume designer or stylist has to do is dress someone according to them and not what everybody else is wearing and I saw a lot of repeat drapings and beadwork I know Selma Hayek. Selma. Selma. Selma Hayek. What do we think of that? Do we have um, that dress? I yes, there we go. I love Selma Hayek. I think she's amazing. I didn't think this dress did anything for her wonderful shape that she has. I didn't either, nor even her hair. I don't think it was she, her best look at all. She, Sorry, Selma. You know, I think you're gorgeous. She's amazing. I just would have liked to see her more glamorous. And um, but again, it's almost like she was making a statement with that dress. Um, well, everyone makes a statement with what they're wearing. Yeah, that's true, you know. But it's just that I would have liked to see something a little bit more that was gonna handle her curves. And she has an amazing body, and she's just a, an amazing person. Yeah, Sandra Bullock. I love Sandra Bullock. I think she's great. I think she's someone in the industry that should be celebrated every single day. She does so much good out there in the world. I mean, but her dress. Well, I just want to say that, you know, she was feeling um, an animal print. And I think that was an animal print. Do we have a shot of that or can you find one? um, She was in gold. No shimmery kind of gold. Or it was uh, I think it was an animal print, either a tiger or leopard. Yeah, it had a little bit of iridescence to it. And I actually thought she looked really pretty. I wasn't crazy about um, the shape of the dress. Well, again, she's got an amazing body. Um, I think she looked really pretty. You know, and again, this is just not to make anyone feel bad or say that they looked bad. No. Everyone everyone looked incredible up there. They felt like they wanted to wear that day. I'm here today to say we have to celebrate the Oscars. We have to put effort into it. We have to have more of our historic actors come on that stage. We have to join the older actor with the younger actor and I'm all for having more women behind the camera and in front um and but I just bring some of the old glamour back exactly. yeah we have to bring the old glamour back we have to make the Oscars feel like this is what we dreamt about when we were kids and we couldn't wait for the Oscars to come on it's true so that's what I'm here for yeah. Well, when I get that book done and Mira <laughs> is wearing the dress and she plays the part of me, um, I'll let you dress me for, for the Oscars. I'm going to make that? you custom. Hmm? I know you No will. off the rack. And no, no. Totally custom. <laughs> I don't yes. do off the rack. So, um, no, that would be really terrific. Mm-hmm. Camille, I'm so, I'm so excited that you came to join us with Brianna, who Thank really, you. really are stunning. And I said this when you walked in. I'm around models and all kinds of people all the time. But you, you're so statuesque, we really can't see because you're sitting behind a desk. But just a beautiful, beautiful girl and wearing such a gorgeous vintage dress Thank from you the so 60s. Much. Um, you're rocking it. It's amazing. <laughs> so 
you know, I know you believe in that. You know, the vintage. I love vintage dresses. Yeah, and you have incredible. to make fashion your own. And again, it's just to celebrate the Oscars. And I think everyone wore what they felt they wanted to represent themselves in. So I think that's never wrong. But I would like to see the glamour back. And even in the performances, I would like to see the glamour back. Thank you so much. And we'll have you back again. I really enjoyed having you on. Thank Camille you so much. Camille Jamel, yeah, and your you. website is Camille Jamel. Uh, dot com. Dot com. Simple. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for being here for another really fun edition. I loved, uh, I loved hearing what you had to say. And uh, we will see you back in a few minutes with Wendy Graff, playwright. Thanks.